Oh, I thought he was right. The light has a knob on here. Get away from the light. Can you leave that for me? What light? Is your mic on? No. Yep. It is now. All right, we'll try this again. Start from the top. It is 6.30 on August 26, 2021. And we're calling this regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District to order. Roll call. We'll start um, with Ben McDougall. Here. Mike Stein. Present. Ruth Summers. Present. Paul Rodriguez. Here. Joe Carroll. Here. Thank you. This is um, Nick Rico, Chairman. All right, approval of the minutes of the July regular monthly meeting. I will entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Thank you, Ben. Uh, any additions, corrections, tractions? I had one uh, on others present. Uh, it would be helpful if we mentioned that Ms. Gagnon, and Mr. Gagnon, and Ms. St. Clair were present by video. Cool. All right. All in favor? All right, motion approved. Thank you. All right, superintendent's report. You're up, Dave. All right. Um, a copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of July is included in your packet. Our average effluent flow um, for the month was 1.28 million gallons per day. Our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged 96% uh, BOD removal and 98% uh, TSS removal for the month with average effluent concentrations of 11 and 6 milligrams per liter. I do not know why that came down. Magic. Uh, a copy of the pump station flows for the month of July is included in your packet. Uh, the iron data on July 30th, pump station 5, was due to the replacement of the PLC. Uh, the solid tax installation, uh, Carl had uh, completed the installation of the solid tax probe at the GBT feed line. Startup is scheduled for tomorrow. Um, the sludge holding tank Vapex unit, Carl and Paul have begun the installation of that unit and um, unit for the sludge holding tank. They hopefully will have it uh, installed by the end of the month and um, startup has yet to be scheduled. Uh, the design is in process um, uh, for the replacement of pump station one. One complication is the requirements for flood protection. Uh, we are working through these issues, and I feel we have identified an approach uh, that will uh, allow us to do what we want to do down there. With the current bidding market, we are considering pre-purchasing some of the equipment and materials. But uh, as we move through the design, we'll uh, think about that some more. Uh, pump station number two, due to the current bid, res uh, bid results and bidding market, uh, I've decided to delay this project until uh, next year in hopes that the bidding market settles down. Uh, and we actually may uh, bid it along with pump station one's work was some of the discussion that we were having. We were still on target to complete the design by the end of September, but uh, the, the intent was to go out to bid in fall, um, and the, the bidding market is just terrible. Uh, Carl, Paul, Rudy, and Sean completed the installation of the generator at the Nunsuch River pump station. This was the last of the three pump stations generated that we budgeted for replacement this year. Um, those guys did a really great job and saved the district a lot of money by uh, just purchasing the equipment and doing the installations with our own staff. Uh, we conducted second interviews for the chief plant operator, Nick, Carl, Ken, Scott, and I, along with Betsy Olton of HR Main Consulting. 
uh, were all involved in, in the interviews. An offer was made to Josh Roy, uh, who accepted the offer, and will be starting uh, this coming Monday, August 30th. Uh, we are looking forward to Josh coming on board. And that is what I have. Any questions on the superintendent's report? Go ahead, Ben. Where's Josh from? <laughs> uh, it was a nationwide search. He lives in Gorham. He works for the currently works for Scarborough Public Works. Um, Josh he grew up is, here in Scarborough. What's that? Didn't he grow up here in Scarborough? He did. His father was a chiropractor. Yes, he yeah. was. Uh, Roy chiropractic right down yep. on uh, Route One. Yep. He's a uh, he's, he's a really he's been at Public Works now for about. 13, 15, years. 15 years. 15 years. He's currently a, um, a foreman. Um, and uh, he has, has demonstrated some great managerial skills. And, uh, um, you know, one of our key criteria is making sure that he would work with and fit in amongst the staff that we currently have. Um, and you know, that's why it involves some of the uh, staff that will be working directly under him in the interview process. So uh, I'm very excited about bringing Josh on board. He seems like he'll be a good fit. He's a great guy. Nice boy. Well, they're all boys. <laughs> <laughs> they're all just babies. <clears throat> okay. Any more questions for the superintendent? All right. Correspondence, we have none. And we have no old business. New business. Remote participation policy. Attached is the remote participation policy that was drafted to allow the use of hybrid meetings. Uh, this policy is based on the standard policy as drafted by Bernstein Shore. Uh, this policy will allow the district to conduct hybrid meetings with reasonable public notice. As noted, board members are expected to be physically present, except when not practical. As previously discussed, it is the intent of the board to hold in-person meetings with the option for remote as outlined by this policy. I recommend approval of the attached remote participation policy. Okay, I will entertain a motion to approve the new remote participation policy. Move to approve. Second. Who's up? Thank you, Bruce. Ben. I thought. Ben, ben. yes, ben. ben and Ruth. Ben and Ruth. So, um, questions, comments? Go ahead, Joe. Two a couple questions. First, uh, uh, under number five, uh, B, um, it discusses that. Uh, Check, excuse me, 5A. Members of the public must be given an opportunity to participate remotely when a member of the board is participating remotely. I'm That's not really sure how that works. Zoom meeting, just like we've been doing. No, no, I understand that. But how would the public know that that's a condition? That's, that's the, the uh, part in there where you have to give, provide reasonable public notice. So basically when we publish our agenda, Yep. On the agenda, they would have we'd have to state whether it's a remote meeting or not. If we can't the Friday before the meeting, or the the night before the meeting, change to remote. There has to be what they say is reasonable public participation. I, I notice, and in discussions with the attorneys, um, they said that would they would consider that when you publish your agenda having where the meeting is being held as would be considered reasonable public notice. Does that answer your question? It does, actually. I, I guess the only, my, rec my only recommendation to amend the current policy would be to address when that release for public notice is. So when we're gonna, if we're going to release the agenda on the Friday before or whatever the case may be, that that's noted in the policy for the benefit of the public and also the board members. Uh, and I think it just references the MSRA section. Yeah. Uh, 
I certainly can add that. Um, why don't I leave, leave the reference to in accordance to that and then add no later than the, the Monday before the meeting or something. Or like the that. agenda, the publication of the agenda. I think that'd be perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Actually, I actually had that in there initially. I had added that. <laughs> I took it out. And the agenda would be posted on the website? We post it. Uh, it gets uh, distributed to uh, and, and posted on the website. OK. Paul, you had a question. Yeah, that is, uh, along those same lines, um, I just wanted to confirm, I think you done this, but just wanted to confirm that our method of communication, our normal method is in compliance with, yep. with that. Matter of fact, I had that discussion law. with our attorney. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. Go ahead, Ben. For every meeting, we'll be deciding between remote, in-person, or hybrid. We have three choices for <clears throat> every meeting, basically. Um, no, I, I didn't think so. I think no. I thought our all our meetings would be in person, yeah. unless we exercise the policy. The, okay, that right. would be up to in person here in the town hall will be the default. Okay, and you know if one of the trustees is unable to physically attend and needs to attend by hybrid, sure it will be on the agenda. But because this town hall is set up to do that and the town has adopted a similar policy already, we could do it that way. If the location changes to the district, we would have to give ample notice to everyone, including the members of the public. Well Either case, person. you got to give ample notice. Right. But this, so, this gives us the flexibility to go fully remote if we need yep. to. Yes. The, we just have. like we were. OK. Yeah. Go ahead, Joe. Well, all right, I think one final question. Did Bernstein Assure uh, provide any additional guidance or explanation for under A, number 2B, uh, when it talks about temporary absence from jurisdiction where traveling to the meeting would cause a significant difficulty? What section were you talking again? Under A, limited scope, two for individual board members, and under B. So if you're traveling for work, so to, and you can't attend in person, um, and you know that's coming up, and we have in time to allow us to um, advertise the meeting as hybrid. Yep. Um, you could attend. Th that would be justification to, ha to hold a hybrid meeting. Fair enough. Uh, I'm obviously asking partially a little bit self-serving. You know, if I need to take where I work 24 hour shifts, if I need to take, as I have in the past, vacation to come to the meeting, or if I can just go remote. I don't, I'm not traveling for work, but I'm certainly I not think, available. I think that would probably fall into, you know, you know, reasonable reasons why you could not attend, in my opinion. I don't, Fair enough. You know, I mean, I, I, up to the chairman at the time. <laughs> I, and we, we know that members of the board do travel, so it would be nice to have them in attendance for their, their, their comments. I mean, obviously, in the past, I've just taken vacation time to fulfill my obligation, but just didn't know if that applied. Um, I would say, you know, in recent... Obviously, I try to be here whenever possible, right? But, in recent experience with my own board, unless we had a remote conference, I would not have a forum. So I think it gives us the flexibility to make sure we can carry carry through with a meeting where circumstances otherwise may not have allowed us to do so. You know, before the pandemic, we couldn't literally phone it in. I mean, I think obviously this shouldn't be an excuse for us as a trustee not to fulfill our obligation, and we're elected to be here, so we should try to be here. But I mean, I'm just trying to understand the scope of that. Thank you. I think you answered it. So I just want to clarify sure. at the end of all of that, he's allowed to go remote, correct? If, if he, he's at work 24 hours. 
That's good, yes? Yes. Yes, he can okay. do a remote meeting if he gives Dave enough notice, notice to publicize, it. To publicize oh, okay. and at the top of the agenda, it will say hybrid. either hybrid or fully remote. Perfect. And the location of the meeting would be either here or at the district. Okay. I support that 100%. Not that you asked, but I just wanted to make sure. I was <laughs> going to ask in the form circle, of a circle. vote soon. <laughs> well, well, I just wanted to make sure because I just think that I think that's the right thing to do. I mean, that's gonna, I'm going to try to still do it, but if I can't in those certain circumstances, I'd just like to know. Thank you. You're welcome. So it's adequate notice. Adequate notice is the, the, the phrase and in discussion with the the attorneys they thought adequate notice would you know when our we publish our agenda would meet that definition just changing it in the last 11th hour to a remote meeting does not that's not fair to the public no no Thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments, questions? All in favor? As amended by? As amended by John. <laughs> None opposed. Thank you. OK. All right. Sanitary district sewer lien fee Increase. Uh, public law 2021, um, that's C stand for chapter 70, raises the $13 fee to $25, and to which it can be adjusted annually by the treasurer of the sanitary district based on the consumer price index as defined by 5 MRS 17019I. Um, oh, nine. I recommend authorizing the treasurer to adjust the lien fees as described above. Motion to approve. I can't even read my own title. Ah, thank you, Joe. Do I have a second? Paul. Second. Thank you, Paul. Any questions, comments? I just had a general question, um, just out of curiosity. In our opinion, is the law adequate? Does this maybe it doesn't matter? So the amount of money. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> do no. we have an opinion on the twenty-five dollar amount? It's, it doesn't cover our costs, if that's your question. <laughs> kind of, yeah. But it is the law. The law is the law. Yeah, we can't kind of charge curious. more. That it's. Yeah. I was just kind of curious. That, what, what, stupid what our amount of money. On that. <laughs> Thank you. Just appreciate that. We pay for costs more. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? All in favor? Not opposed. Thank you. Budget summary. The seventh month budget summary is uh, including your packet. I recommend approval. I don't seem to have mine. There it is. Motion to approve. Thank you, Ben. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Joe. All right, any comments, questions on the numbers? All right, in case of no questions, comments, I'll ask for a vote. All in favor? None opposed? Thank you. Public comments, we have no public. So I'll turn it over to the trustees' comments. Why don't we start on the right-hand side with Joe. Well, it's nice to be back in the chamber again with all of you guys and actually seeing you guys' faces in person, uh, some of you for the first time. So uh, welcome back to everybody. It's nice to be back in front of the cameras live for the public where it's just recorded. Um, I'd like to welcome Josh aboard the, the sanitary, sanitary district family um, and uh, look forward to all of us working with him and the staff. Uh, I know he'll be welcomed very well. Um, and so look forward to that opportunity and uh, just wish everybody else the rest of their safe and happy summer. Fall has been upon us. 
I don't even want to say that. But, and thank you for the staff for their continued good efforts over the summer. It's been a hot one. All right, Paul. I'll echo everything Joe said. Welcome, Josh. Great to see you all. Thanks. Ruth. Would it be too simple to say ditto? But no. Wendy and Serena, thank you for all your hard work, and I'm very excited about Josh. I think he's a great addition, and it's good to see somebody from Scarborough continue their line of work here in Scarborough. Cool. Ben. Yeah, what everybody else said, it's, it's nice to be here. Welcome to Josh, and it's nice to see everything just continues to run smooth at the district. Thank you to all the staff. Cool. Mike? Um, I'd have to ditto everyone, <laughs> but it, it's certainly nice uh, to know that uh, Josh is is a Scarborough boy. Yeah, very good, very good. Cool. Thank you. Have comment? I have a comment from the superintendent coming. Go for it. I, I joked about it being a nationwide search. It actually was. We did interview somebody from California. So, oh, wow. <laughs> so. Um, we did, we did have, we interviewed five in the first yes. term, and then followed up with another four, what, four of them? Four or? of them, and followed up with four second interviews. And um, it was a, and the second interviews proved to be very, very telling in a lot of ways and helped us make that final decision. So. Well, thank you for your work on diligence. What's that? So we assumed you did due diligence. All right, I will echo the comments of my fellow trustees. Welcome Josh aboard and wish everyone a safe and happy Labor Day. I will ask for the final motion of the evening. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Bruce. Second. Anyone second? Second. Thank you, Ben. All in favor? I'm liking this. We weren't able to do that before, turn the lights on and off. <laughs>